Hey everyone, we've reached a bit of an inflection point in this course, and so I want to take just a couple minutes to look at what we've already done and see how it's going to be useful in what we're going to do in the future. Up to this point, we focused on energy, and in particular, we've divided our energies into two separate kinds. On the one hand, mechanical energies are just energies that objects have because of their position and speed. Internal energies, on the other hand, are things that exist within the object itself. They don't depend on the position or speed of the object. They depend on things like its temperature and its phase. But of course, we know that there's actually more going on here. After all, substances are made up of particles, atoms, and molecules, and it is the behavior of those atoms and molecules that gives rise to the kinds of behavior that we see around us. If you've taken chemistry, for example, you probably know that the temperature of a substance has to do with the way that its individual particles are moving. The faster they're moving, the higher the temperature. And of course, we know what kind of energy is associated with movement. It's kinetic energy, which we've thought of as a mechanical energy. What we're going to be doing over the next several DLs is trying to understand how the behavior of the individual particles, and specifically how the mechanical energy of individual particles in a substance, give rise to things like the thermal energy and bond energy of the substance. Understanding this is going to allow us to better make sense of why different substances behave the way they do. Now I want to make an important point here. The kinds of situations we're going to be looking at in these next few DLs are not necessarily going to be super intuitive. The reason simply being that it's hard to have intuition about the ways that atoms and molecules behave. It's not like gravity where we're experiencing it all the time. Atoms and molecules just don't behave in ways that we're used to. But crucially, everything that we've learned about energy is still going to apply. Conservation of energy still applies to individual particles, just as it does to huge collections of particles. And so even though we're going to start seeing things like the Leonard Jones potential energy, which is not at all intuitive, we're still able to use all the machinery that we've learned in this course to make sense of why things are happening. If your particle has a certain amount of energy and then you give it more energy in the form of heat, well, its total energy is going to increase, just as a substance with a certain amount of thermal energy increases its thermal energy when you add heat. As I said way back in one of the first videos, Physics 7a could in a sense be thought of as just a bunch of different applications of conservation of energy. These topics here are no different. We're still using conservation of energy all over the place. But we're also going to have to introduce some new ideas, some ideas about the ways that individual particles behave. In the next video, we're going to see the first piece of this puzzle, the Leonard Jones potential. The Leonard Jones potential is just a description of how two particles right next to each other will interact. By understanding the Leonard Jones potential, we'll start to understand how particles are bonded together and how the way that they interact with each other through those bonds explains both bond energy and thermal energy. That's all for now. See you in the next video.